You're listening to Jeremy Vaney's Peritopia Vlog, right here on YouTube. Peritopia. It's Jeremy Vaney. Um, someone on our message board had asked, why is ufology uh, a boys club? And I said, well, maybe I'll do a vlog about it. Um, and then I saw Susan Kornacki had asked sort of a similar question or the same question in a different way uh, on Facebook. So I thought, hmm, maybe now's the time to address this or my thoughts on it, uh, which is basically that my hair looks awful. Wait, that's not the point. Which is basically that um, that that ufology, uh, you know, of course, started out uh, in the '40s when men were men and women knew their roles and all that sort of stuff, right? And so, male authority figures uh, tackling a subject that was, uh, you know, a, a military a military concern, right? Um, and these are all male dominated issues politics military authority rot 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 right and so we see this carried over um through the years that's where the boys club thing starts just with ufology in general um and then it carries over into the bravado of a steve bassett who pounds his fist and says it's absolutely positively confirmed aliens and now we've got to listen to this horse shit military whistleblower like where do you think all of that comes from like the caring you know, this caring so deeply about what a horseshit military whistleblower has to say. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got the abduction stuff, right? And so Betty and Barney Hill, where else are they going to go but a male psychologist? First, I think they went to the military, right? And then they end up going to see a psychologist who's going to be male because that's what happens back then, in, in the back in the day. So that's where that has its beginnings and back in the male-dominated era or overtly male-dominated, I should say. I guess we're still in that era. Um, but, uh, but, but also, then women become, uh, they assume the role of victim, right? So you've got the male researcher who's out in front, you know, uh, with cert great certainty and, and perhaps pompousness, depending on the researcher, but definitely certainty that this is what's happening to this person, and isn't it awful, and blah, blah, blah. And then the woman sits back in the shadows and says, yeah, this is happening to me. Uh, I don't know, I'm so confused. Um, and maybe she'll get invited to speak uh, about her own life situation, but probably not. Probably he will, because he's writing the books um, about uh, her. But then when these women speak out, like, say, in Emma Woods, right, then we don't like that. We don't like it when they're strong, because then it's the misogynistic, oh, she must have been in love with him. Oh, Oh, you know, women are hysterical women. You know, she's crazy. She's hysterical. All this sort of stuff. Or Carol Rainey speaking out about, about Bud Hopkins, which has mainly garnered her uh, positive feedback. But, you know, every now and then you'll see something about a woman scorned. You know, this is, oh, this is the, you've got to take it with a grain of salt. This is the ex-wife speaking. It's like, you know, forget the facts. Let's not deal with the facts. Let's just deal with, let's make it this issue. Um, so... You know, we do uh, we do see that still carrying over today. And I wonder, um, I've never spoken to Linda Moulton Howe. Um, I've spoken to Paula Harris. And whatever you think about them as researchers or, or what have you, reporters, um, um, I don't, again, I don't know about Linda Moulton Howe, but Paula Harris seemed to just constantly recite her resume. And I hear that Linda Moulton Howe has a chip. Um, and that she's very territorial and all of this. And, and, and I'm not saying this to spite either of them, even though I don't like Paul Harris and I don't know Linda Moulton Howe, but I'm putting all that aside. I'm just saying it would make sense to me that the reason that they, if, the, if that's true of Linda Moulton Howe, uh, and it is true of Paul Harris, that the reason is it's a male-dominated thing that they grew up in, you know, trying to break into and securing their name in uh and and not have their cases stolen by uh, male researchers and all of that you know that's what it takes to survive in a boys club and i would love to have that conversation actually with linda moulton howe um not so much paula harris because she's a dope <laughs> but linda moulton howe seems uh, actually intelligent 
So I would lo- I'd love to have that conversation with her sometime. Um, what is it like to survive in a boys club? Um, what else? Uh, Gene Steinberg um, is lying about uh, what's about the content of Carol Rainey's article. Um, uh, you know, saying that it's uh, her talking about Bud Hopkins' sordid affairs with other women, which is not in the article at all. So what is that about, Gene? Uh, it's about him not having read the article, um, which, you know, he, apparently he has sources that tell him about this article that he could very well read for free that everyone else has. But instead, he'd rather shut down threads on his forum and no one's allowed to talk about it. But he's not picking a side. But if you happen to be on the side of someone who's uh, slamming Carol Rainey or Emma Woods or uh, Paratopia or Jeff and I, well, the thread is liable to stay open. If you're someone who is speaking logic to nonsense, well, then we're not learning anything here. The thread's going to close. And I was going to do a long sort of I was going to read what he wrote in his newsletter and do this long tirade about it. Um, and also Paul Kimball, who mentioned me, I guess, in some interview, not by name because he's too much of a wimp, uh, but basically said Jeremy Vaney, um, like, again, he didn't mention me by name, but he said this, you know, at least I'm not like some people who invited Bud Hopkins to speak at their conference. I knew all about hypnosis and the cult of personality and abduction research long, long ago. I was one of the first to speak out about it. You know, all of his arrogant bravado and I was the first me 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 center of attention horseshit um I I just want to say like when you guys are doing this stuff um I know it's easy to go after me because I'm the the, I'm the jokey guy I've got monkey videos on YouTube and stuff right so I'm not to be taken seriously even though clearly I can carry on a deep conversation with anybody (laughs) and uh our show uh attracts uh pretty intelligent people from within and without the paranormal world but never mind that never mind the fact that we're trusted uh by the audience and by the people on our show and that everybody who comes on basically says uh what a great conversation they had never mind all that i'm a chimp (laughs) so it's easy to come after me um but when you're doing that in this case you're taking away from the fact that that hypnosis is being used by these amateur researchers, uh, you know, for the sake of making books, right? Um, and hurting people and essentially affecting people's lives, fucking up their minds, right? So when you're lying about what Carol Rainey's article is about and you're spreading disinformation like that, um, if you're Gene Steinberg, um, you're hurting people. You're hurting people to get me or to get Paratopia or to get Jeff Ritzman or whatever it is. Um, or maybe just to get people on your message board to stop talking about our show and to start talking about your show. And I could see how that would be annoying. Um, or if you're Paul Kimball and you feel like, why didn't anyone pay attention to me when I've been saying this all along? Why are these guys, you know, changing the field uh, or changing the perception of abduction research in the field? You know, I get it. I, I get all the you want acclaim and, and, and all of that. Um, but see, put all that shit aside, man. Like really, there are people at stake. So isn't it time to put all that shit aside? Especially Paul Kimball, who does believe that this is all bullshit and who doesn't care about Jacobs or Bud Hopkins work and doesn't have a vested interest in defending them. Um, I mean, why not just say to yourself, wow, Jeremy didn't know that. I knew it before he did. And then he learned about it, right? Which is what happened. And now he's not on that side anymore. He doesn't support that research anymore. I mean, that's just called learning shit, right? So you're basically attacking me for having learned something uh, later in life than you did and then acting on it uh, and then people paying attention to that. Somehow that's bad to you, that people paid attention to me and not you or paid attention to us and not you. Um, I don't want Jeff to feel left out because for some reason he feels left out when people just attack me. So, uh, <laughs> I don't get it. I, I don't get how I'm the monkey when people in three piece suits stand on a stage and lie to you with a complete straight, serious face. 
about what is clearly nonsense that the guy in the audience who is me who like waves his hand and goes this is nonsense like that guy's the fucking asshole right but not the guy on the stage lying to you who you paid to see lie to you that's okay that's maturity really (laughs) uh so but beyond that i mean that's my little tangential issue but beyond that again let's bring it back to that humans life human life is at stake here i mean it's nothing less than that really because the hoaxing stuff is one thing but when you get into like implanting multiple personality disorder suggestions in someone's mind to ward off evil aliens um etc etc or even just using hypnosis wrongly you know using it poorly co-creating a scenario because um the client brings their expectations about you the famous researcher with them and together you co-create this horseshit reality of you know malevolent alien doctors diddling um and then they think that that's real right they go home and they think that they had this scenario which they may or may not have had but that's the point isn't it may or may not um and paul kimball gets that and so if he's been speaking about that forever shouldn't he be glad that i'm speaking about it too shouldn't we be on the same page and on the same team on this one but no somehow no um and if you're a a paracast listener and you know that gene steinberg is lying to you or, or misrepresenting what this article is and all you have to do is read the article to see that he is um then shouldn't you be demanding more of him an apology uh boycotting i don't know something like is there any recourse for these people I mean, how do you claim that you care about this subject and and you want to get to the truth and, and all of that and you don't even have the basic decency to put aside your petty squabbles and differences with another show or the personalities of another show who are actually doing the work um, to say, you know what? Uh, people being fucked with trumps my hatred of paratopia or my hatred of jeremy vaney or my hatred of jeff ritzman this just seems like a no-brainer to me but um i don't know i'm just throwing that out there it kind of makes me sad kind of makes me angry um eh, what are you gonna do such as ufology but hopefully things are gonna change because it does seem as though uh at least you know the people on the inside you know the old school ufologists even the ones that we were just talking about the old boys club uh seem to be privately many of them saying thank you for doing this and um carol is brave and we sort of suspected this or we don't think you went far enough i mean you would be surprised who is saying these things so i hope that they would say it publicly someday but probably not because once you start rocking one boat then someone's going to start rocking your boat we're already seeing this happen with us right so there you go um in any event that is my rant or two until next vlog i will see you later this concludes jeremy vaney's peritopia vlog right here on youtube